Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Thursday, January 14th, 2015, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Here's what's coming up tonight. Tonight, live coverage and analysis of the first GOP debate of 2016. While the contenders are set, Rand Paul supporters protest the senator's exclusion from the main event. Stay tuned as we crash through lies and disinformation in real time. That's next. Masses of fighters on the back of pickup trucks, twisted souls plotting in apartments or garages. They pose an enormous danger to civilians. They have to be stopped. But they do not threaten our national existence. And we sure don't need to push away vital allies in this fight by echoing the lie that ISIL is somehow representative of one of the world's largest religions. So that was President Obama giving himself a pat on the back, letting everyone know ISIS isn't a problem. They've got everything under control. He also went on to say that we should call them what they really are. And no, he never uttered the words radical Islamic terrorists. He basically called them a bunch of hooligans that just needed to be stopped. Well, if you think that ISIS is not an issue, not a threat to our national security, why don't you ask Indonesia? Look what they had to deal with today. Uh, ISIS backers have now claimed responsibility for the Paris style terror attack that took place in Jakarta today. Uh, the attackers set off a series of explosions in a bustling shopping area of the capital city there. And Thursday, this is what authorities are saying was an imitation of last November's terror attacks in Paris. Uh, and of course, ISIS backers immediately claimed responsibility. A Canadian and an Indonesian were killed, as well as all five of the attackers involved, and another 19 people were injured. So obviously, just a really devastating scene there in Indonesia today with people sprawled all over the sidewalks. And so these type of attacks are going to be taking place uh, more often. And But Obama, he, he doesn't want you to worry about that. He doesn't want anyone to worry because the borders are wide open, and we are definitely not gonna be putting a pause on the refugee program bringing these people in. So let's just take a little stroll down memory, memory lane. This is the last year, okay? So we've got obviously the Paris terror attacks that just took place a couple of months ago. And there was what, about 11 attackers involved in this that left 130 dead, 350 injured uh, in a series of, of attacks there. And 51 of those victims are still receiving treatment in the hospital, that's how bad their injuries are, so they're still receiving treatment. Then, of course, once again in France, we have a 15-year-old who took a machete to one of his teachers, and now he is facing charges, uh, and, and he said he's proud of his machete attack on his Jewish teacher. He said he didn't regret it. In fact, he was only just ashamed that he didn't manage to kill the teacher. So there you go, that guy, seen, and, uh, he seems like you know, a well-adjusted young man there. Now there's also a confidential interior ministry, ministry report basically saying that Germany is a prime target for a Paris-style terrorist attack. And this is a leaked government report. They say homegrown lone wolves and Islamic State fighters returning from Syria are likely preparing elaborate attacks on civilian targets inside the country. Security forces believe the terrorists will use multiple time-staggered attacks on varied targets in order to create a sense of overwhelming panic and lasting fear. So you can see the Paris terror attacks are the blueprint for the sort of things that we are gonna start seeing popping up because of course these are things that are hard to track, they're hard to predict. And Obama says, you know, we're just gonna shut them down, take them down, those little hooligans. So then we also, in, in Paris, don't forget that there was another attack that was actually thwarted by three Americans who happened to be on the train when an Islamist militant launched an attack on that train. He had guns and knives and, uh, you know, they were able to take him down, obviously suffering injuries themselves. Another man was shot. Let's not forget about the fact that Two Islamists tried, two Islamic terrorists tried to launch attacks here in Dallas as well, but they were taken down by Texas police who shot them dead. So, you know, that was thwarted, but of course that was an attack that we shouldn't have had to really worry about. 
But of course, you know, those people shouldn't have been provoking that terror attack by exercising their First Amendment right. You know, that was what we heard after that. Basically, apologists coming out and saying, well, you know, they had it coming. And let's ask that cop in Philly who was shot by a man who came out and said, you know what, I pledged allegiance to ISIS. And that's why I came and shot the cop there in Philly. And now we have also got reports of two uh, Iraqi refugees, both of them were from uh, originally from Palestine, then Iraq, and now they refugees here to the United States. One of those are calling the hipster terrorist because he was super cool, posing for social media in his perfectly coiffed hair and his designer sunglasses uh, in California. So they say he was just here trying to start a new life in America. And another, uh, he was a young man, really anxious to return to the Middle East to fight in the Syrian civil war. And then we have another guy, Omar Faraj Saeed Al-Hardan. He was here in Houston and he's been indicted for providing material support to ISIS. And federal agents say that this Iraqi refugee wanted to bomb Texas malls. So he's actually now facing charges that he tried to help the Islamic State. Uh, he wanted to set off bombs at two Houston malls. He was learning how to make electronic transmitters that could be used to detonate explosive devices. Oh, just a lovely little guy. And of course, his family has now come out today saying that he, he hasn't done anything of the sort. We knew nothing about it. His 18 year old wife says, no, it couldn't be him, you know. And let's take a look at these cell phones, of course, because a lot of people were sending us uh, stories saying, why are there all of these mysterious cell phone purchases here in Missouri? There were five total confirmed incidents of suspicious phone buys in Missouri at Walmarts all over the state. Most of the time it was happening from the same person and they never actually gave out the identity of that man. So 60 cell phone purchases at one Walmart, 100 at prepaid cell phones at another. So yeah, of course, people say, oh, well, he could have just been taking these to sell off prepaid phones to people who can't afford them. Or he could also be using them um, as electronic transmitters that could set off explosive devices, much like the San, Bernardi San Bernardino attackers as well. That's the exact same thing. They had uh, explosive de devices that were going to be detonated via their cell phone. Those things failed, but you know that's suspicious. Okay, and you know I don't don't worry about it. It's not a problem. You just don't be worried. Obama said everything is completely fine. Now we have another Maryland man. Um, he's actually being indicted today. He's accused of receiving $9,000 from ISIS to carry out an attack on American soil. So this man told the FBI that the militants said that the money was to be used for operational purposes. And they cited the May attack on the Draw Prophet Muhammad cartoon contest in Garland, uh, Texas, as the kind of target that he should contemplate. You should contemplate, you know, attacking these targets with this money. And the FBI said that earlier this year he had pledged allegiance to the Islamic State and he wanted to die as a martyr. Now he was using um, multiple email accounts, pay as you go phones, once again, suspicious phone purchases to communicate with Islamic State operatives. And he was also using social media, which of course, this is one of the ma major ways that they are communicating with these prepaid phones, social media on Twitter. So the point is the threat is here. It is real. Meanwhile, the borders are wide open and you are a racist if you dare suggest that we should put a pause on the refugee program until we have a better vetting process, until we can legitimately vet people. And you know, it seems like we've already got a big issue with that based on this stack of news. So now getting back to social media, a Florida woman is suing Twitter for giving ISIS a platform. Uh, her husband was killed in a lone wolf terrorist attack in Jordan. He was actually training some men there, probably uh, moderate rebels. He was training them how to be policemen and he was killed. Well, now this woman has filed a lawsuit against Twitter. She is accusing the company of supporting the spread of ISIS by enabling ISIS leaders to recruit and fundraise on its platform. And you know, going back to that 15 year old who tried to hack his teacher with a machete, a machete that's how he was radicalized by going online and all of these social platforms. So, you know, this is the issue, but people don't even have to get on their social media. They can just come right across the wide open border, much like a lot of these Syrians and 
other than Mexicans, as they're calling them, that are coming across the border um, with their fake passports. And it's a huge deal, but you know what? Don't be racist, don't even worry about it. Obama gave a wink and a nod and said it was all okay. Now, another person that is being threatened by ISIS via social media is UFC fighter Tim Kennedy. And he actually has kind of laughed all this stuff off in the past, but he has now been visited by the FBI with a credible threat. So um, basically, he, obviously ISIS tends to target high profile military personnel and Kennedy served in the 7th Special Forces Group and is a Sergeant First Class with the Texas National Guard. So this is why they are coming after him because he is high profile. Well, Tim Kennedy was on the Alex Jones show today and he had a message for ISIS. <laughs> I said years ago, this ISIS spinoff of Al-Qaeda is big, a lot bigger than Al-Qaeda was because I'm on the ground. I get the threats. I see them at Ferguson and at New York, and I see the signs. I see the stickers. It, it's trendy with the left, and uh, it's, it's in Texas. We go out to these Islamic training centers and get death threats. We get hacked. We get. Uh, they put Joe Biggs, former Staff Sergeant U.S. Army, decorated combat vet. They put him in ISIS videos. Um, when he went down to the border to show him on the Texas border. So this is what they do. But 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 Tim Kennedy, just like bin Laden's a high value target or was, he's a high value target. Now, Tim, I just set the stage. Is that accurate what I said? Correct me if I'm wrong. You're the expert. And, and please break down in as much detail as you can about the personal uh, Federal Bureau of Investigation visit and warning you got. And it's great to have you here in the info war. I've been a fan for a long time. So just appreciate you having me. Uh, you know, from what they said, the FBI, um, the, the credible threat came from every every day I get five to 10 people saying, hey, I hate you, you're gonna die, I wanna kill you, everything that you stand for, I hate. Um, what makes this significant is, um, you know, this one was geotagged and they had, they had content that they couldn't have gotten from anywhere else besides first person. So they had pictures of a guy's head that they had cut off and they said, this is gonna be you. Um, the geotag picture was was you know close enough that the FBI says, hey, th this is significant, and that's why we're that's why we're talking to you right now. Um, the problem was that I've been doing this for 13 years. You know, um, I I don't know if I'm desensitized to it or I, I just don't care, and I, do, I have zero respect for the cowards that they are. Um, and the FBI is like, you're not normal. You should be a little bit freaked out by this. I was like, I don't know. Let them come. I don't you know, like. I, I've been traveling all over the world to find these guys. And now they're going to come to Texas. Last time they gave it a whirl was in Garland. And that didn't go so well for them. So, you know, like, come to Central Texas and see how this is going to work. You know, they're, the only thing they got going for them is they're brutal. They're evil and they have no respect for human life. They're uneducated, they're weak, and they're stupid. Um, but they have no respect for anything. And they'll take advantage of the, the weakest sheep that they can get their hands on. And that's just not going to be me. Well, it certainly shows that they uh, are upset about your success, the fact you survived all those operations and clandestine uh, fights you were in. And it's too bad you can't write a book about that. It's, it's pretty interesting stuff uh, just from folks I've talked to in the military. But obviously, you can't get into that here today. But there's a reason they don't like you. Yeah, you know, I was in some of the most elite un units that special operations have. Um, I was in the missions to go get the guys that they have worshiped, you know, their entire lives. You know, like as I love Chris Kyle and Marks Luttrell, you know, like those are heroes, the Shugarts, the Gordons, um, you know, that wing, the ISIS Al Qaeda, they, they have their own guys that, that they do that. Well, I'm the guy that went and found those dudes. And uh, they, they hate that about me. And now uh, the success that I'm having, not only as a shooter, but now as you know, as a UFC athlete, you know, I'm a, I'm a contender for the title, one of the top fighters in the world, and uh, and I still stand true to the values. So of you're winning shooting champions, you're winning UFC uh, big bouts. You got a hit show on um, Discovery Channel. Is it History with a phone? History Channel? That's yeah. right, hunting it. I've seen it quite a few times. It's great. I mean, they certainly must not like that. No, they hate me. They hate everything about me. They hate everything about you. They hate everything we stand for. You know, and they're going to do anything that they can to find the the weakest, softest target around us. I know you're still involved with the military and active duty and things, so you can't get into all that, but uh, we've had seen top generals, like the former head of defense intelligence come out and say, we were ordered to basically aid al-Nusra, which is al-Qaeda in Syria. It's a horrible thing, we followed orders, now it's out of control. We see other generals coming out, the head of Southcom coming out and saying, I don't wanna follow the orders, I've got to. Women in frontline combat will ruin the military. That's unprecedented to have generals speaking out yeah. that, that shows you how bad obama is 